Hello everyone, uh, my name is Logan Vishan, and uh, the cultural aspect I chose to do my project on was Japanese style art, and in more specifically Nihonga, which translated to English literally means Japanese style paintings. Now the uh, art form of Nihonga only comes in the style of paintings. Um, there are no such sculptures or anything that can fit the style of art. So now I would like to jump into what is Nihonga? Now, Nihonga, a general term for traditional Japanese painting, means literally, like I said in the slide before, Japanese style painting. Now, in common use, this term originated during the Meiji period to distinguish Japanese painting from Western style oil painting in Europe. Uh, the distinction between Western style oil painting and Nihonga is broadly speaking just the difference in the materials used. Now, while some would argue that any Japanese painting is considered Nihonga, the distinction based on materials continues to be used today. And here on the left, you can see an example of a photo of a bird. Um, this is a Nihonga painting, and on the right is a European style painting. And even though they may seem the same in texture, they are very, very different because of the materials used and how these paintings were formulated. So now here are the materials uh, that are used to make a Nihonga painting, a real Nihonga painting. Um, first, it is uh, silk and washi, which can be found uh, at the top left of the page in this photo here. Um, this is what they use for their base. This is their paper, uh, their canvas that they use to draw their paintings on. Uh, the next is sumi. Um, this is an ink that they used, uh, which is uh, derived from an animal bone mixed with glue. Uh, it helps stick to the paper very well. Um, the next image here on the top right is called Iwa Inoku. Uh, these are the natural pigments derived from shells, stones, or corals that they use to give their oral paintings colors. Now at the bottom left, uh, this is called Gofun, which is calcium carbonate powder. Uh, they use this a lot to bring out the white textures in their paintings, as well as they use it as a uh, base background for their paint on the canvas that helps the paint actually stick to the canvas better. Um, they also use metals such as here in this bottom middle photo. Um, those are uh, silver gold leaf. Um, those are used in the paintings themselves to give them a more natural uh, mineral shine or a metal shine. Um, and tools that they use seem very basic. Uh, it is just brushes and other blending tools that they use no other hard etching materials, just brushing and edging. So now I would like to jump into the materials used in European paintings and the sheer difference it has with Nihonga paintings. Now, uh, what they use are oil-based paints, which can be found in a factory. Uh, they are not derived from natural resources and um, they have a more uh, unnatural look to them uh, on the painting itself. Uh, now, here is a photo of linseed oil, and linseed oil is what they use to uh, put on the base of the painting to help the paint stick better to it, as well as slowing the dry time. Uh, this can be a replacement for the calcium carbonate powder or the sumi, which naturally helps the paint stick to Nihonga paintings. Uh, here you can see they use uh, traditional style paintbrushes. This is pretty similar to what they use because paintbrushes are paintbrushes. And for a canvas, uh, they will use a traditional style canvas that you can find virtually anywhere. It is not derived from anything and it is just a plain piece of canvas. So now I would like to introduce how uh, Nihonga originally originated. And so in 1876, at the beginning of the Meiji period, um, the Meiji government um, establishes an art school to promote the study of Western art and invite infamous uh, Italian painter Antonio Fontanesi to teach the class. Um, a man by the name Ernest Fenelosa came to Japan two years later to teach philosophy at Tokyo University, and while there, Fenelosa showed a very strong interest in Japanese art and highly praised it. So the word Nihonga was first adopted when Fenelosa gave his lecture speech on the new theory of art at the Dragon Pond Society in 1882. He points out specific characteristics that give Nihonga paintings its name. And so now I want to, before we move on, uh, point out that the man on the left is the art teacher Antonio Fontanesi, and the man on the right is the one who coined the term Nihonga, Ernest Fenelosa. 
I would like to jump into the specific characteristics that make up a Nihonga painting. And uh, first of all, um, the painting does not seek realism, as in what you're seeing in the painting is what the artist's mind sees in that particular moment, uh, rather than creating a more realistic version of literally what they see. Nihonga paintings uh, do not have shadows. Uh, Nihonga paintings are usually very bright and never dull of color. Uh, they use a lot of whites to vibrantly make figures stand out more and to give the perception of peace and tranquility. Um, all the paintings are made with an outline. Uh, the paintings are made with the border to bring out the main piece uh, in the artwork as well as making it look more dimensional in the center. The color tones that they use are not rich, uh, meaning the artist only used basic colors when painting Nihonga paintings, never using uh, very fluorescent colors or super, super dark tones. And lastly, uh, the expression is very simple. Uh, Nihonga paintings are very literal. Uh, what you see is ultimately what you get. Uh, doesn't ask for anything to be answered, simply to just be appreciated. And now here on the left is a uh, prime example of what a outline would look like for the painting. Um, most of them have borders like this and it kind of helps keep the image centered and keep your eyes intrigued on what you're looking for. So now I would like to jump into a more in-depth background of a Nihongo painting. Uh, the painting on the left depicts an androgynous Japanese god named Kanon who embodies loving compassion uh, the figure seems to be standing on a cloud looking upon a small child floating in an orb. The overall effect given off by this piece is of graceful harmony and tranquility. Uh, as you can see, Canon is watching over the baby, giving it protection. The precise lines of this painting ground the subject within a space that could be in the sky, looking down upon a rocky pinnacle of mountain. Um, underwater in a golden sea, or as if in inner contemplation looking into uh, the pure land of Buddhism itself. Now, what that really means is uh, in this photo, it is given to the viewer to give the perception of what they want. There is no sure answer to what is literally happening, so the person viewing this is left with whatever they want to believe of it. And now, the man on the right is the person who painted this painting. His name is Kano Hogai. He is one of the most famous Japanese Nihonga painters, and this photo that is here to the left is one of his most profound and famous oil paintings. Thank you all for watching and for being such a great audience. I hope you have a wonderful day and an even better break.